Hello everyone, you are watching a snippet of the countdown program from December 22, 2022. Today is Thursday. See the full version of the program on the Patreon resource. And thanks to everyone who is becoming our patrons right now. And do not forget to subscribe to our daily motion, where we will gradually transfer our materials from the hostile YouTube. The main news of the last 24 hours is the visit of Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky to the United States and the expectation of the consequences of this visit. The anniversary figure of 100,000 prettier rashes who forever rested in Ukraine organically coincided with Zelensky's visit to the United States. Everything was arranged with maximum drama, from Bakhmut to the White House. Zelensky did not even begin to change his military-style wardrobe for a civilized solemn one, which emphasized the circumstances of the visit. Both the meeting with Biden and the joint press conference followed by a speech in Congress were one storyline leading to undeniable success. Here is the assistance provided with the Patriot complexes, and the same vision of the world, in a word, an application for a triumph and at least fixing a moral victory over the enemy with the consolidation of a pro-Western course in the future. Zelensky is bringing weapons and other material support as an investment in global democracy. Congress may approve a $45 billion aid package for Ukraine in the next 48 hours. The older Russians only sighed, Yeltsin once triumphantly spoke in Congress. How everything has changed, beyond recognition. The Kremlin's official reaction was not long in coming. Russian ambassador to the United States Antonov growled that the provocative actions of the United States are steadily leading to an escalation, the consequences of which cannot even be imagined. But Antonov's meager imagination will be compensated by the convincing advance of the armed forces of Ukraine at the front. And the matter is clearly not limited to the wound in the ass of the Kremlin minion Rogozin who received his shrapnel gifts in Donetsk, with delivery to the Shesh Besh restaurant, where he celebrated his own birthday. The outcome of the battle for Bakhmut today is considered the point that will finally turn the tide of the military campaign in favor of Ukraine. The Kremlin, for its part, continues to try to draw Belarus into the military conflict. Lukashenko dodges as best he can, imitating preparations for the opening of the Belarusian front, not forgetting to purr about moving troops on his territory. At the same time, it is alarming that, according to British intelligence, Belarusian instructors have already begun to train the Russian mobilized. Perhaps the rush from the territory of Belarus to Kiev is considered by Moscow as the last desperate chance for a blitz victory in a protracted war, for which the empire was completely unprepared. Nevertheless, both Shuigu and Putin reaffirmed the maximalist goals in this war, and the head of the defense ministry proposed to increase the draft age for military service. When recruiting the armed forces, gradually increase the age of conscription of citizens from 18 to 21 years, and raise the limit to 30 years, Shuigu said. Thus, the number of troops is planned to be increased to 1.5 million servicemen with 695,000 contract servicemen among them. No one knows what these attempts to reform the army during the course of the war will lead to, at a time when the armed forces of Ukraine are gaining strength, and the help of the Western allies gives them additional bonuses for developing success. And the theses of Zelensky, uttered by him within the walls of the American Congress, look more convincing than the cooing of the rashest demiurges of war. This is a battle not only for territory, for one or another part of Europe. The battle is not only for the life, freedom and security of Ukrainians or any other country that Russia is trying to conquer. This fight will determine what kind of world our children and grandchildren will live in. Will determine whether it will be a democracy for Ukrainians, for Americans, for everyone. Perhaps the main position of the Kremlin on the results of Zelensky's visit to the United States was expressed today by Dmitry Peskov. He grumbled that Patriot anti-aircraft missile systems would become legitimate targets for Moscow, since the demilitarization of Ukraine is one of the goals of a special military operation. In addition, according to Peskov, American supplies do not contribute to the settlement of the situation and do not interfere with the achievement of the goals of the operation. Unfortunately, this leads to the fact that the suffering of the Ukrainian people will be longer than they could be. The end of the quote.
That is, the maniac promised to prologue the victim's torment, which once again confirms his status as an international terrorist. Ukrainian intelligence does not rule out that now Russia may resort to another massive rocket attack on Ukraine in the next day or two. Sources indicate that Russia will involve in the strike all available carriers of cruise missiles with a range of 500 kilometers, in total it is planned to launch at least 67 missiles. And the next day after the strike, the use of drones is not excluded. This may be the Kremlin's practical reaction to the outcome of Zelensky's visit. And in the department of Lavrov there was a quiet hysteria. Russian Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Maria Zaharova called Zelensky an American son of a bitch several times. Apparently, they acted on the principle that Zelensky is their son of a bitch. And accordingly, everything is allowed to him all the more, he is not just their son of a bitch. He is also their tool to cower our country. What can I say? This pseudo-democratic approach further strengthens Kiev's sense of permissiveness and impunity and pushes him to extremely dangerous steps with unpredictable consequences. Become our patrons now and look further in this program. Commenting on the results of Zelensky's visit to Washington, French President Macron called on Europe to rely less on the United States in matters of security and again suggested the need for some kind of guarantees to save Putin's face. Former commander of U.S. forces in Europe, Retired General Ben Hodges predicts the return of Crimea to Ukraine as early as August 2023. Two more shipping companies, Chinese and Greek, refuse to carry Russian oil. The metallurgical industry has also been hit. There is nowhere to put 30 million tons of Russian steel. The troubles in the economic sphere caused by the sanctions pressure from the West also hurt the ruble, which lost 17% against major currencies in just 20 trading days. You will laugh, but the only Russian aircraft carrier Admiral Kuznetsov, known to the world as Kuzya Skunk, decided to shake the old days again, and again smoked at the plant in Murmansk, unable to withstand the severe consequences of the repair. And that is all. See the full version of the program on the Patreon resource. And thanks to everyone who is becoming our patrons right now. Subscribe to our Daily Motion via the link in the description. Starting from January 2023, the main materials will be posted there. YouTube is pushing us? We are looking for alternative venues. I hugged everyone. I'll meet you tomorrow, on Friday's live broadcast. Glory to Ukraine.